Vegetation cover is a vertical projection of the plant material when viewed from above. It's an important metric in ecology because vegetation cover is related to things like soil stability, uh, wildlife habitat, forage production, uh, and hydrologic health. We can measure vegetation cover in uh, various ways using different uh, types of frames. And basically what we do is, in combination with the transect method, we lay these frames, we select one of several frames, and we lay them out at specified distances along our transect. Uh, once the frame is in place, we estimate the percent of that uh, the vegetation using an ocular estimate from our eye and our mind to kind of lump the vegetation into part of the frame. And then uh, we combine those numbers to estimate cover for the entire uh, transect. So there's a whole bunch of different sizes of frames that you can use. You can use round frames. In this case, I've got my daughter's hula hoop. Uh, this is a one by one meter frame that we're gonna use today. Um, the classic frame that you'll hear about is the Daubenmeyer frame. And Daubenmeyer was a famous ecologist uh, in the 1930s who established a lot of our current ecological principles. Um, and the Daubenmeyer frame is uh, 20 centimeters by 50 centimeters. And what makes it unique is that it's marked with this red and white paint to help indicate different uh, percentages of the frame. Now we also need to decide which type of cover we're estimating. So you'll hear about canopy cover and you'll also hear about basal cover. Canopy cover is the total area of a plant. So if we draw a circle around this arrowleaf balsam root, uh, we would just assume that everything underneath this plant is uh, the canopy cover. Foliar cover would be the individual area where just a rain droplet would intercept these leaves and there might be gaps in the foliar cover uh, within that canopy cover. And then basal cover is a different metric and that would be just the area of the plant that's rooted into the soil. You can imagine if I was a potato farmer or if I was pulling weeds, I would grab the crown of the plant and I would yank. That is the base of the plant and that's how we would measure basal cover. So once we've decided on the convention that we're gonna use, uh, in this case, we're gonna measure canopy cover today. Then we need to relate uh, the amount of cover that the plants project to a known area within the frame that we've selected. So in this case, I have a one by meter frame. If we cut it in half, either vertically or horizontally, either of those halves represents 50% cover. If we cut it into quadrants through the middle and vertically, then each of those corners represents 25% of the frame. And if we want, uh, say, 5% or less of the frame, we take a small 1 20th of the frame. In this case, we've marked it with orange tape. So it's a 15 by 15 centimeter uh, corner of the plot. So once we're oriented to our frame, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it to the specified point along the transect. In this case, I'm gonna to go to five, 10, 15, and 25 meters. I'm gonna lay the, the frame uh, perpendicular to the tape, and I'm gonna put the rear corner of it at five meters. And that's important uh, that you put the frame in the same place every time. Some methods will require you to put it over the center of the tape or on one side or the other. Today, I'm gonna to be on the north side of the tape and with the rear corner at five meters. Okay, now that we've established our frame along the transect, we're gonna to try to calibrate our measurements. Uh, so as a crew, you might have several different people that are reading these frames and we want to make sure that we're estimating things in the same way. Uh, it's an ocular estimate, so it's a semi-qualitative uh, or semi-quantitative method. So what we're going to do is 
we're going to estimate the cover of balsam root uh, just to calibrate. And so I'm going to lump all the leaves that I see from this plant on one corner of the pipe, and I'm only estimating the leaves that fall within the frame. I'm going to combine that with the leaves from this plant, and again, just the ones that fall within the plane. And then there's some seedlings here of balsam root where the leaves are sticking up. I'm going to take all that in my mind, and I'm going to try to shove it in a corner uh, and estimate, is that falling within one of these cover classes? Is it 1 to 5 percent? Is it 6 to 25 percent? Is it 26 to 50 percent? 51 to 75 percent? Or 76 to 95 percent? Or greater than that. And those are those cover classes one through six. Um, now if we try to do this without those cover classes, let's just both come up with a number of cover ourselves. So Ryan's got 20% balsam root cover. I was thinking 15%. So we're pretty close. The important thing is that we're both within that cover class two. So six to 25 percent and if we do these repeat measurements over time those uh, bin measurements of, uh, of those six cover classes will kind of come out in the wash and we'll actually get a pretty good estimate so now that we've done that for arrowleaf balsam root which is a forb why don't we do it for all the annual grasses that fall within the plot when we're doing the grasses we're only looking at the green material. We're going to estimate litter and all that dead grass leaf and other dead leaves as a separate category. So Ryan's got 5% grass cover, and I confirm that's it's probably 5% or less. So we'll give that cover class one. Now we're going to look at the rock that's within the frame. And again, this is just rock that if a raindrop were to fall, the rock would be the first thing that that raindrop would encounter. So we both confirm that it's less than 5%, so we're going to give it cover class 1. And finally, we'll do the same thing for bare mineral soil. And bare mineral soil is cover class 1 as well. So. Uh, one thing with this method is it's not critical that uh, that we reach a hundred percent cover so if we add up all these variables across a row within a frame and they don't equal a hundred percent exactly that's okay and that's because we're estimating these cover classes which stretch over a range of values when we take this data back into the lab uh, we'll talk about estimating the real values using the center point of those bins now that we've got this frame, let's move on to uh, frame number two, which is at 10 meters. So it's important to calibrate our estimates uh, under different vegetation types. And so here we have sagebrush, uh, which is a shrub, and it has a very different growth form from uh, balsam root, which is the forb we were looking at in the last frame, and the annual grasses. Uh, so with sagebrush in particular, there's a lot of parts of the canopy that are dead. And so we're not necessarily going to count those uh, dead twiggy parts of the plant. There's also some dead woody material here, and that's going to count as litter uh, or wood. Um, so they'll go in a separate category. So when we're interested in canopy cover, again, we're just looking at the live amount of material that a raindrop is going to encounter. And with this sagebrush, we need to talk about and calibrate our measurements to decide, do, are we counting the canopy as the full extent of what the plant once was, or are we kind of going in and out along this uh, very um, uneven, it's not circular uh, by any means, there's all these little clumps. So we need to decide if we're gonna count those individually and lump them later. So I think that is the method we're going to do today. We're going to look at these little tufts of canopy and we're going to try to estimate them. We're going to ignore these dead twiggy parts of the plant. 
So Ryan and I both talked and we agree that this is cover class three. So that's everything from 26 to 50% cover within the plot. And now we're gonna do uh, the forbs. And in this case, we've got several different species of forbs. We've got some Waithia uh, amplexicollis, which is mule's ears. Uh, we've got this cool Aragonium and a vetch. Uh, and all those species fall within the forb category. So we're gonna lump different species to estimate forb cover because they're all in the same functional group. What do you think? 50. So Ryan's saying about 25% uh, cover. And so, you know, that's right on the cusp of two and three. I'm gonna say, uh, let's put it in cover class three. So 26 to 50% cover. Looking at the grasses, again, we're at about uh, less than 5%, so that's cover class one. We're looking at the bare ground. Again, we've got cover class one, less than 5%. And now when we're looking at the, the litter, the litter is gonna now include this dead woody material as well as the leaves and things. Uh, and that dead woody material really bumps up the number uh, in this plot. So I'm thinking it's cover class two, uh, and that again is six to 25% cover. All right, it's important when the sagebrush uh, or other shrub canopy cover is uh, keeping the frame from being flush with the soil surface, we can unhook it and we wanna make sure and kind of thread it down through the plant canopy uh, so that it's even with the soil surface. I'm gonna be careful not to step inside the plot while I'm doing this. And I'm gonna rehook it uh, on both sides. And now that's gonna be a lot more reliable estimate as we look down and estimate the vertical cover of vegetation.